What is up down and sideways, all you beautiful individuals? We have returned after a slight hiatus to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties just in time to look ahead to the LEC finals. It is this new format. It's full steam ahead. There's no break in between. We're going right into finals with G2 sitting there waiting as the final boss. It's kind of catching me off guard because I'm so used to how things played out last year with the LEC and all the stops, all the breaks standing out in between. Pedal to the metal all the way through this winter split. Yes, sir. We are right at the very end of it. This is the last weekend. And you know that means we're getting some big time showdowns out there in the LEC. Especially when you had the LPL on the extended lunar, New Year break, the LCK was off for a week, now we're getting the LCS off for a week. The LEC are the guys going full steam ahead, it's almost like they're playing an entire extra split in between um, all these other squads. But obviously it's the gauntlet with the bosses waiting, things kick off with Fnatic versus Mad Lions Koi, which oof, is a matchup I'm excited for, number one. These guys already met earlier in the round of playoffs, and they had a pretty insane Game 2 ending, if you recall. You combine that with the fact that Fnatic are only here because of a two-second cooldown on a Draven E out of Exekick in that insane Game 3 ending, and Fnatic are truly the heartbreak kids so far in playoffs. Holy cow, what a matchup we get to kick off this final week of the winter split in the LEC. You laid it out, Fnatic versus Mad Lions Koi and the story of how we got to this point. I'm so thrilled that this is the one that is kicking us off on this finals weekend because yes, this is gonna give you that heat. This is gonna have a little bit of that rivalry feeling, I think, for both of these squads. And there's gonna be some desperation on both of these teams to try and get across that finish line, make sure that their team because they've got a juicy prize waiting for them in the matchup against BDS, which that's what we're going to have to talk about a little bit later. And even though Fnatic won that head-to-head -head earlier in the playoffs, since then, MDK have looked like the more dominant team. They haven't had close series. They've been 2 0 in their way through in dominant fashion. I'm immediately drawn to the bot lane in this matchup because both El Yoya and Razork have spent a lot of time trying to get their respective AD carries ahead. And both Noah and Supa have been pretty damn good in playoffs, getting solo kills, 2v2s, 1v1s in the straight-up AD carry matchup. And both of them have some of the best numbers when it comes to bot laners through playoffs. Both of them very much showing that it has been worthwhile for that attention from Razork and El Yoya to make those trips down to the bottom lane, get gold into their pockets, and the damage is there for the squad. They have been reliable, much more so than rookies are usually in this type of situation, and especially this transition towards these best of series, these more important games, more pressure, everything packed onto it. We have not seen any slips in these young players' performances. That is certainly where my eyes are gonna be drawn at the very beginning of looking at the, uh, this series. Obviously, the other big focal point has gotta be on that top side because despite winning the SK series, Oscar Rinnan got gapped by Irrelevant in pretty much all three of those games, even the ones Fnatic were winning. And now you bring in Mirwin, who has looked like one of the best top laners in the LEC in his rookie split with some of the spiciest picks. You're going to need a level up out of Oscar Rinnan, especially because Mad Lions should just say ban Cassante so he can't hide on that pick and let's let our dude pop off. Yeah, that is absolutely got to be the strategy. I think you might even... Maybe you want to slip in an Aatrox, depending on how you're feeling about those two, but those are the, absolutely the pinnacle champions that are going on in that top lane. Get Remove them, allow that creativity, the champion pool that Mirwin has already shown us and has dabbled in for the little bits of this LEC winter split to give us that type of difference maker, because you are right to identify. Ascarant was certainly a weak link in that past series for Fnatic, a player that struggled all three games, even in the one that Fnatic is winning, didn't have that advantage individually and was being taken out by Irrelevant, by the rest of the squad. This has got to be an avenue where he has to step up and there needs to be preparations and draft strategies, I think, from Fnatic to protect or enable that to a better degree than it was in the past. And, you know... Now that we're heading into best of fives for both of these squads, I know Mad Lions have looked better over the last couple of series, but the plot armor that Fnatic has for a G2 finals waiting in that matchup and combined with best of fives are a different beast 
than best of threes in terms of the mental fortitude that you need to have and feel like the experience that Fnatic has is going to be enough to push them past the four rookies. But man, are MDK an exciting squad. And I wouldn't be surprised if they come in guns blazing with an upset. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you right now, Silver Scrapes, book it. Five full games. We're going the distance with this series. And yes, I am also feeling that that experience that is going to come through will be valuable in that fifth game for Fnatic to find a way. Players like Humanoid and Razor to lead the charge in that decisive game in this series. This is going to have it. This is going to have the thrills. You're going to see those mistakes being made as you extend into a best of series. And they're going to see how those are capitalized upon by the enemy team. We're supposed to get the playoff level up and boost from Umanoid, even though he's already been at a high level in the regular season, but feel like that is going to be the big matchup that changes against the rookie in Frescawi, who even did look really good the last two series. But whichever one of these squads ends up winning this, you got to feel like have the better chance against G2 in the finals, especially with this recent kind of breaking news that Adam will not be playing this weekend for BDS. Gen X coming in in a almost emergency sub scenario we don't know the details whether it's injury health personal why adam isn't playing but that is obviously a huge hit to bds's chances and it's one of those questions where it comes is it better to have this knowledge with this amount of runway time before the day right so you can make this type of change you can have some type of you know experience and moving through together with this new shift or is it better to have it just be kind of on the spot on the try to take that action where you got to do it all so fast, you can't have a second to really think and wait on it and, and, and evaluate that type of situation and react to it that type of way. Going to have to see how this plays out for BDS, but you are right thinking that whoever's coming out of this Fnatic Mad Alliance series tested against each other is going to have that advantage moving into a BDS that by all means is going to be weaker than they have ever been at any point. Looking at where their strength is, of course, their main guy, the MVP for that team, bleeding heart for them is Adam up in that top side but we've made a big point to talk about how this roster has shown growth in every other role ex you know aside from Adam the steps they needed to take after their uh, trip to Worlds last year this is going to be one hell of a test for those four to show that they have improved and are contributing more to the success to the power that BDS represents at this spot in the LEC. And it is a huge opportunity for them to prove that they do have more diversity in their play style, that they're not reliant on Adam and his God's picks, which they've already been proving throughout this winter split. But no team's going to be sleeping on anyone in a best of five, whether it's Fnatic or Mad Lions. No Adam for BDS doesn't matter. They're going to be absolutely locked in. The problem here is... Can anyone beat G2? You heard even in the teaser BDS talking about their matchup and said G2 was just way too good. We couldn't beat them. Luckily, we get another opportunity, but G2 is way too good right now. Can any of these squads take them down? Uh, the uninteresting answer. No, I don't think so. I don't think that's in the cards for the LEC in this winter split. The way things are, how good G2 has been, the form that they've shown throughout, you know, whether the early parts, the middle parts, or even as we've moved into more so, these best of threes that they've been able to nail, you have to be looking at them as the top dog of the LEC region. And then when you think about Mad Lions, Koi, Fnatic, BDS, what's the ticket to get to this G2 matchup? Well, you're going to have to show something that you probably wanted to save for that G2 matchup, something creative, something in the tank. Meanwhile, G2's just been sitting there. They've been seeing everything come on in through, and they're definitely going to be ready and prepared for this big showdown. I'm honestly impressed how motivated and focused G2 continues to be. Maybe some of that is because of how Worlds ended last year for them, but being so dominant the last few splits, they are not missing a beat in EU. Fnatic was the only team to really test them in this playoff push, so maybe they have the best opportunity, but G2 are going to be absolutely massive favorites against any of these three squads that end up meeting them in finals. Was a little bit of LCK action. We didn't get to touch on KT's dominant 2-0 over Gen G earlier in the week. They followed that up. Mr. Piosik is unironically... I think you're slotting him as number two, maybe even number one best jungler in the LCK. And after 3,700 plus days, we get the first Ramus in the jungle sighting. Mark Pielsic was only like 13 years old the last time this pick was in the jungle. He had to go all the way to the LCS to learn this technology and bring it over to the LCK. This dark secret technique and strategy. 
yes, the Ramus comes through. And, you know, believe it or not, the Ramus was actually a very impactful part of that win for KT Rolster. I think they could have had handled it without the Ramus is the way that it, KT It wasn't has the reason they won the game. That's for sure. No, but we'll be happy to talk about this one. Crazy to think that of, of all the players that we're talking about on this KT Rollster roster, so many, you know, you have Barrel and Death in the bottom lane, long mainstay at this level, BDD. You've got the new rookie up there in Perfect E, but you're still looking at Mr. Piosik and what he has done since returning from the LCS. He has been fantastic for this team, and you're right, right there at the very front of what we've had in the junglers from the LCK so far, Piosik turning their heads around. And... KT, the absolute shift of where they have gone from a few weeks to go, where we were talking about them in D+, plus, kind of in that same category, who can muscle ahead of the other? Well, D+, plus showing against T1 versus KT showing against Gen.G, and these teams could not be heading in different directions at breakneck speeds. Yeah, and this is really kind of the shock that we have come out of from this lunar break for the LCK to see the form of these two in such drastic directions. I think a lot of people figured maybe KT Rolster will rise up to this level at some point, but no, I don't think anybody had the immediate uh, gas out of the of the break to get to this point, and especially then also Gen G to look as flat as they did. I don't think anybody had that call coming out of the break. It just makes that top four in the LCK Getting a little bit tighter now with maybe T1 stepping on some heads to climb back into the clouds after that dominant 2-0 over D+. But plenty more uh, LCK action going to be going over the weekend. LCS, as I mentioned, is off for a week, which means the NACL is actually slotting in to that main stage event over the LCS this weekend. LEC finals, of course. And we get the LPL returning over the weekend as well. So no LCS, but... Maybe that's a nice break to see some more competitive regions. It's good to have the break for the LCS, I will say. As much as I have enjoyed some of the changes and, and kind of fresh, fresh, air, fresh air that the LCS has proven to be this early part of the year, I think the important thing to also remember with that one, talking about the NACL, getting a little bit more coverage, shout-outs to FlyQuest, doing a nice little charity match between LCS pros and NACL as well, getting that underway on the Saturday. Still... Going to have some LCS action, but it's important to check in in this little break and take your breathers elsewhere to watch some international League of Legends as you laid out, LPL, LCK, and of course, this big weekend final for the LEC. Yeah, FlyQuest, despite, you know, super team not working, continually picking up W's off the rift in the LCS. So yeah, a huge smorgasbord of events over the weekend, but that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you so much for joining us, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.